Batman, Batman, does whatever a Batman can. Can he swing? Can he fly? Because I think he's gonna die. Look out, here comes the Batman. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Kibble Space Program. So today I present to you the Bat Cycle and the Batmobile. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I'm fairly looking forward to this. So yes, of course, I made the, I made the, the design, it works. Yes, it's awesome, pretty cool design. Uh, what you're seeing now is not exactly the way the design turned out at the end. Uh, I had changed a few things. Of course, things change as you go along. You might, you know, find a better part to put down and, you know, things that look better, which is what we've done here. Uh, again, you will see what's happened. So with the Batmobile and the Bat Cycle, uh, the Bat Cycle was also known as the Bat Pod in the Dark Knight film. And the thing is, is that I think it was in one of the the second Dark Knight film, maybe I don't really remember, but in one of the films, I remember that the the Batm the Batmobile was jettisoned in what, at one point, and then we were left with the Bat Pod, and then Batman pretty much just drove off. <laughs> I remember that, so that's pretty much what we are replicating here, and uh, of course, trying to make the the tires or well, the wheels look nice and thick. There, as you can see, they're pretty thick, and that's the way they are in the actual the Dark Knight film. Yes, now. In regards to the Batmobile, uh, the Batmobile that we are making is the one from the Dark Knight, just to confirm that. Uh, there are multiple versions of it, in fact, in other Batman films, because really the Batman, all the Batman films, there are heaps of Batman films, and in each one, you like you have like a different type of Batmobile, each one looking pretty good, but I, I definitely think the Dark Knight one is overall the best, and the most functional, because it's also, yeah, it looks pretty good. So as you can see, the tires are nice, pretty thick there, and it, it looks somewhat realistic already, and you kind of have an idea of how it's going to work. And at the moment, yes, it does work. I was kind of a bit afraid, I was, you know, a bit hesitant about a few things, because I really thought that something would break here, and I would have to restart. So I was just being careful with what I was doing. Because uh, really, if you overlap something, sometimes this happens where... The, the two overlapping parts will just uh, spaz out, as, as what I say. Uh, but in this case, that didn't happen. So we were quite lucky. Now, here we go. This is one of the first tests, and I was really surprised it actually worked. I, I thought it would just topple over, but because it's so small and there aren't too many parts on this thing, you don't need any struts. There aren't any struts on this thing, so pretty damn stable. As you can see, uh, I, I shouldn't actually say stable, because here's the thing. When you turn left or right... It's it doesn't function the way a normal motorbike would in real life because let's say you're turning left You're gonna move your whole body to the left so that you know You don't move to the right when turning left because you would tip over and die possibly But in this case we can't actually adjust our the, the weight of the Kerbal and the, the angle of course of the the motorbike Now in the front there I have added a few missiles and these are long-range missiles and look at that. There's a bit of knockback when you shoot them. But it's still pretty good. They go far away. And the impact is deadly. Uh -huh. Bang, there we go. <laughs> so fully functional missiles. Fairly easy to make. And now it is time for the Batmobile. Uh -huh. So as I mentioned, the Bat Pod is inside the Batmobile. Okay. So now when I first started making this, I was a bit worried it wouldn't work. And it would be very unstable. But it's actually complete opposite. It's it somewhat stable. Yes, it's stable. Uh, you can turn left or right without this thing tipping. Uh, you can do a hard left or a hard right, no problem. No issues there. And at the moment, just trying to keep the, the basic structure done. And then we do have that the coupler there, if you, as you can see. Pretty much the whole Batmobile is attached to that single the coupler in the back there. And then the, the bat, uh, then the, the coupler is then attached to the, the bat pod or the bat cycle. Now, uh, I did add a small liquid fuel engine there. Just a small amount of fuel, actually. Uh, it doesn't really need too much fuel. I mean, from what I saw in the Dark Knight film a long time ago, the fuel was only used as a, as a short boost. Almost like a, a thruster that goes off for, for a short, short amount of seconds. Uh, in, in this case, it pretty much does the same thing. Yeah, because... It doesn't last for very long with the amount of fuel we have. And the fuel is actually at the back there, the, the small fuel tank that we usually use for maybe rovers or probes. Yeah. But again, here we go. Just trying to place the, the outer shell 
Uh, so far looking good. And if you're wondering what the RAM air intake thing is doing there, well, in the actual design, you kind of have that kind of feature, yeah? Because it's it's an air intake from the looks of it, unless it's just for looks. But I've seen it looks like an air intake in the actual film. So pretty much it is done. Yes, it's done. Um, one of my first tests, I believe, and fully functional. To my surprise, and what did we just do here? Something broke. Uh, ah, I think I know what it did there. Yes. So I jettisoned the, the Batmobile just to see if the, the Batmobile would actually fly off. Because that's my intention. You want to get the Batmobile as far as away from the Batpod so that the Batpod inside, hidden inside, does not get damaged. And that's something to be cautious about. So in a, in a short period of time, you will see what my resolve was. And it's an awesome one. You can see it now. So we are placing some separatrons. Why? Because they separate things. Ha oh, <laughs> hence the name. This is just a way to separate the Batmobile. In fact, I was so surprised that this thing worked in the first go. Hell of a surprise. I don't know if we're going to try it now. Maybe we're going to try it. I don't know. Uh, let's see. And you can you can actually jettison the, the Batmobile uh, while moving at like this kind of speed, which is what, 21 meters per second. Which is not bad. And there we go. Bang. That was my first test. I was surprised. I mean, that thing went high. Where'd it go now? That's really high. And you're left with the bat cycle. Look at that. Perfectly fine. No damage whatsoever. It's moving. It's, it's working so well. So now it is time to add the Kerbals because we do have two Kerbal seats on the Batmobile, on the, the bat cycle. And of course, well, there is one Batman in the film, in the, the Dark Knight film. There's no two Batman, but in this case, we have Batman or Kerbman. I'll say Batman with M-E-N, not man. You get it? <laughs> and everything on top of the, the Batmobile shell there is just for looks. Uh, so, yeah. And there we go. Of course. So, we've got the two Kerbals inside. Oh, no. Here's the thing. Now, one of the Kerbals, I couldn't actually get him to get into the the seat on the bat, bat cycle there. So, I decided to place a seat on the shell of the Batmobile so that I could then take the Kerbal off the shell of the Batmobile and then he'll be inside the Batmobile so then we can go ahead and put him onto the internal seat. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Too much talking. But this is what happened. The Kerbal is dead. He's dead. No, he's not dead. But that was weird. Like, his head's, his head's stuck there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But anyway, I fixed that. No problem whatsoever. Judges in the back part there, of course... And I, was, I thought something broke there for a second. Uh, no. That was just the cover of the engine. The engine still remained. Well, the engine cover. Yeah. And I actually thought the engine came off instead of just the cover. But, yeah, no, I was mistaken there. Uh, the, yeah, there are missiles in this thing as well. They're not there at the moment because I must have used them. But they work again. They're exact same missiles as the, the bat cycle. And this thing... Uh, let's do a bit of testing. I think we are doing a bit of testing here, actually. Uh, so it's moving, and it is... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Full and goes away, and topples over. That's awesome. Look at that. So functional, guys. Look at that. And the shell. The thing about the shell is that those panels can handle an impact tolerance. They have an impact tolerance of 80 meters per second, which is pretty good, and I'm fairly sure we weren't even moving any higher than 80 meters per second. As well as that, uh, a side note. I made a... Drop pod recently, oh, maybe about several weeks ago, actually. That's not recent. Uh, fully functional, but the Kerbal dies in a drop pod. And if you don't know what a drop pod is, I advise you to research it. So we are almost there, approaching the Batmobile. Uh, and what are we going to do? You guessed it. You guessed it. Bang. <laughs> Bang, we shot it. And it's not dead. Damn, only if we had a couple of extra missiles... We would have put an end to that Batmobile, <laughs> for sure. And those Kerbals, it's so hilarious how they're on an angle like that. You can clearly tell how depressed they are, <laughs> just staring at the floor. It's like, oh, I'm so unhappy. <laughs> That's what they're doing. And again, almost at the end, bang, there we go. <laughs> and everything smashes, except for the Batmobile. It survives. But guys, hope you enjoyed. Download the link in the description, and see you next time.